Hi, my name is Matt Duff. I'm an application engineer covering precision amplifiers, specifically instrumentation amplifiers. And today we're going to talk about how to convert from RMS noise to peak-to-peak -peak noise. So in order to cover our topic, I've drawn a noise signal here. And we need to understand what RMS noise are and what what peak-to-peak peak noise is. So let's talk about peak-to-peak -peak noise first. One way we can look at this noise signal is by looking at the max and min points. So here's our min point, here's our max point, and we can just subtract the min from the max. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that when we do this, we're only using two points out of this whole noise waveform. And depending on when we measure, we may get a different min or a different max. So this is somewhat of an approximation, and, and the longer that we measure our noise signal, it's not to say that we get better accuracy because maybe I just get a bigger point down here. We all, at the end of the day, we only have two points to measure from. Now RMS is a different way of looking at this noise signal. So uh, imagine if I took this noise signal and I made a histogram out of it. So I plotted and every point I made a histogram. What we end up seeing, especially if I plot this for a long time, is I get something that looks like a bell curve. And what I can do is I can say, I want to know what the standard deviation of this bell curve is. So if I plot, you know, here's my mean, and I plot, okay, I'm going to take my standard deviation, here's a standard deviation in between here. Uh, now, because a noise signal has a mean value of zero, the RMS and the standard deviation are exactly equivalent. So this is what is meant when we say the RMS of a noise signal. It's just one standard deviation of uh, the histogram that we get when we plot this noise signal. And note that the longer, in this case, the longer that we take uh, measurements, the more and more accurate our RMS value gets because we're using all the points in the waveform. So not just two, but all of them. Okay, so the next question is, how do we convert between these two numbers? So RMS is nice and accurate. But I just look at this noise waveform and I can't say, oh, you know, the RMS is this. Whereas if I have peak to peak, it's pretty easy to look. So a lot of folks like peak to peak because it's very easy, for example, to measure on an oscilloscope. So how do we convert between the two? Well, first question is, is what do we want to define as our peak to peak? So the longer that I measure, the more outliers I get on this bell curve and the bigger my peak to peak gets. So what do I define as peak to peak? Well, some folks will say, I want to define peak to peak as, say, 99.7% of the points of my waveform. And other folks may say, I want to define it as 99.9%. .9 or others may even define it as something else. So depending on how you define it, I uh, will say what your conversion factor is. So I've drawn up over here. If you want 99.7% of your signal, you need six standard deviations. So you need three this way and three this way. If you want 99.9%, .9 you need 6.6. .6. So I need 3.3 .3 on one side and 3.3 .3 on the other. So it just depends on how much, how, how you're going to define your peak to peak. So uh, you may hear some people say six, some people say 6.6. .6. So let's just say that we're going to use the 6.6 .6 definition. And it's very easy, you just multiply. So if I had a, a one microvolt RMS signal, I just multiply by 6.6, .6 and I get my approximation of 6.6 .6 microvolts peak to peak. And that's all how you do it. Uh, so today in this presentation, we covered how to convert from RMS to peak to peak noise. I would also encourage you to take a look at our other presentation where we talk about converting spectral density, or often seen as nanovolts per hertz, into RMS noise. Thanks.